Cool. So um, I change a, a title a bit, so it's a bit more catchy, but uh, it's the the same topic. Um, so my idea for for today is that um, I give you. So it's it's about Quint. So this is a new specification language um, and tooling um, we have built and, and released recently. Uh, but idea is to to just provide a bit of context, um, mostly about like lessons learned on protocol design and QA side in Cosmos. So it's more uh, obvious why we have decided to build Quint. And uh, I hope that that um, this will, you know, uh, sound familiar to, to, to you guys also. So you, you might get like interested in learning more about Quint. Um, so I will just start by by very short intro about informal. Um, so informal systems um, is a cooperative uh, and um, the biggest contributor to the Cosmos project. Um, we sort we have like kind of very ambitious plan. So our north stars are that we would like to change the quality standards uh, of three uh, key institutions uh, in society. Software how it is being built and deployed, money, how it is being issued and distributed, and organizations, um, how we own them and govern them. Uh, Cosmos um, is open source blockchain project that essentially enables development of uh, sovereign and decentralized uh, blockchain applications that are interconnected with each other. Uh, so like uh, Cosmos uh, stack composed of several components. Uh, at the bottom of the stack, we have consensus engine, um, which is, is known as Tendermint. And we recently uh, rebranded it into Comet. So hopefully Comet will, um, you know, uh, sometime in future also start to be uh, recognized as a, as a good consensus engine. Um, it is a BFT state machine replication framework um, built on top of P2P and Gossip player. Um, protocols in Cosmos or a state machine in Cosmos are implemented using uh, um, Cosmos SDK, which is a default uh, proof of stake implementation um, built on top of Comet. And there are several smart contract frameworks which are um, offered essentially as module in Cosmos SDK, like Cosmovasm, which is Rust implementation or or like um, Evmos, which is Solidity one, or Agoric JavaScript. Um, protocol in, in Cosmos are communicating using inter-blockchain communication protocol, or what we call IBC. At this point in time, there are more than 50 um, active blockchains in Cosmos, and, and there is probably the same number of like uh, projects which are in testnet. So it's sort of already kind of relatively interesting um, space in terms of like, uh, you know, various use cases. And um, uh, it, it is sort of uh, from, let's say, uh, as we are mostly operating at infrastructure level, uh, it is really, um, you know, amazing to see uh, where we are right now as an ecosystem. Um, so this was like, really like, you know, super short intro about like Cosmos and informal. And, uh, and so I would like now to, um, to give you a bit of overview of like um, how like protocol design um, and uh, essentially quality assurance like evolved in Cosmos uh, since I joined. And uh, I joined the project um, in 2017 and it was still like a very small team. Uh, it was basically one organization working on everything uh, with like tens of engineers. Um, and um, at that time, we had like a very basic um, specification of the consensus protocol. So um, the interesting thing is that like I have been asked about formal methods during my first interview, um, and I was like um, very ignorant on the topic, and I, I sort of like tried to discourage them from following the spot and saying that you know uh, if you have good DS DSLs, then we are probably fine. Um, so what the, the way, I mean, they, they were hopefully uh, not convinced by uh, by my idea and we decided like investing a lot in um, formal verification methods. Um, and this is also how like we ended up with Quint. Uh, but what I did essentially when I joined, I, I tried to understand like um, the protocol 
um, and to formalize it using ground-based model. And then we found the, the major lightness issue. And uh, then we suggested a relatively simple fix um, how to deal with this. But then we, we started to, to learn um, that essentially the current implementation differs significantly from the spec. There are a lot of like, um, how to say key parts, which are not like really reflected in the existing specification. And that like uh, the proposed fix um, does not really work out of the box. Uh, what was also interesting uh, for me observing is that um, the issue and the fix was hard to explain to engineers in a team. Uh, the founders, like as they were really like, you know, they build the stuff, they understood the problem. Uh, but then with the rest of the team, it was very hard uh, to explain to them that we have actually a problem. And then it was even more tricky to explain uh, how we are supposed to address the problem. And then this like small, let's say small uh, at the protocol level change resulted in months of implementation work. Um, what was also very hard to do is like um, having like tests, which will uh, give us enough confidence that we indeed like um, address the issue. And so these are like challenges we were facing like in 2017. And, um, and, and you know, unfortunately, uh, they are still with us. So um, we kind of, I think, like better understand now the challenges, but they are still here. And so here I'm trying kind of to, to like uh, sort of list them uh, so you can understand like what sort of like the major uh, challenges we are facing. Uh, the first one is that onboarding people into protocols and, and code is very hard and expensive pro process. Um, we are also like um, just, you know, having like people understand what's what's happening there. So not just being understood so they can they can contribute, but really have like deep understanding so they can really uh, um, implement the changes with confidence is, is very hard. Um, and so like, you know, anecdotally, uh, the core part of Tendermint, for example, or, or you know, IBC um, haven't been touched for years. So most of the engineers were just like, you know, uh, trying to stay at the surface as it was like, um, it was very, you know, um, scary to modify the core. Uh, also like evaluating, like when we want to implement like a new protocol or, or new, you know, major uh, module in the system, figuring out like what design options we have and how they would impact the whole system um, is very tricky. And finally, um, as I already mentioned, making sure that we have like, you know, good test coverage, that we are indeed like um, testing all important, like, you know, corner cases um, is, is something which, which uh, was, and, and it's still like um, a major challenge. And uh, to kind of, you know, uh, summarize the, the challenges here as uh, I'm sure this audience, um, understand well, reliable reasoning about distributed or concurrent system is hard. And this is kind of the, essentially the, at the core of like, you know, Quint and what we are trying to do at Informa, like trying to sort of make sure, trying to sort of improve uh, this and make like these aspects uh, easier to do. Um, so how we, uh, how we essentially uh, at Informa and in general in Cosmos, um, tackle those challenges uh, I, I was mentioning before. So there are several elements. The first one is like heavily relying on formal verification um, and in general, you know, specification, like mathematical specification of the core parts of the stack. We use TLA plus, um, which is, is still the, 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 I would say the standard uh, for um, in, in this domain for expressing protocols. Um, and we are also using like the mix of like um, TLA plus specs and English mathematical representation in a sort of POTSI style. Um, as we realize that TLA plus um, with its semantics is not necessarily like the easy read for for engineers, for example, uh, for protocol for protocol developers. You know, it, it, some of them were actually uh, not having problem to use it, but like 
that was not like kind of you know um, dominant preference. And so we figure out that we actually need to keep kind of uh, both mathematical and English specification, which will be consumed by the larger audience. And then we were writing also formal specs in, in TLA plus, which um, have been then model checked by by model checkers like TLC or Apalachee. Um, for all like non-trivial changes to the system, um, the process development process required writing architecture decision records, um, which are used as a sort of uh, the um, the transaction history uh, of the system in a sense. Um, and this is something which um, I think was was really good practice um, that essentially before we we you know uh, implement a feature, the expectation was that like uh, we we need to explain and justify why this is done and how it might look like. But it was still on a kind of quite high level um, as as you know before really diving into implementation it's it's like uh not always obvious to figure out like the the impact the changes will have on the on the overall system and um and yeah one thing also we realized that um although having like a good um, specification and protocol descriptions um definitely improves the confidence in, in the protocol and code there is still like no guarantee that the implementation uh will you know correctly implement the protocol and that there are no like other um security problems in the code and um in order to sort of like close the gap between the protocol specs and implementation we started like uh, using uh, model based testing which is essentially a way to generate uh, complex test scenarios out of model written in in, in our case in TLA plus and we develop like several tools to facilitate like Atomcraft and Molator, which are simplifying the process so that essentially uh, if there is a model in TLA plus we are able to sort of uh, integrate it directly into the um, real system and you know real tests uh, for the in our case like mostly you know SDK or Cosmosm uh, blockchain applications. So um, in retrospect, um, when we look at like um, what really what worked well, and so what are the places for improvements, uh, on a sort of like side of uh, where we were kind of happy uh, with our approach, we um, we learned that rigorous protocol design and formal specifications are indeed very helpful uh, in discovering issues at early stage, de-risking the development, and in general, increasing overall confidence in the protocols and implementation. Uh, by, by following the, the spec-first approach, um, I think we managed to stay away from like the major issues. Um, and, um, and then also like um, using model-based testing to connect specifications with implementations allow us to have like more complete uh, testing strategies and also keep the code and the uh, protocols in sync and it was also very um, appealing as a just like very robust engineering methodology uh, to uh, facilitate attracting uh, and hiring uh, a lot of really strong talents um, on the on the other side um, there have been also you know we were we were witnessing some challenges with our current approach. Uh, the first one was that TLA plus uh, was hard to use beyond the expert circle. Um, it was like, um, there was like quite strong pushback from especially engineering community in general. There are of course like always uh, exceptions um, to adopt TLA plus um, as the, the syntax and tooling uh, were not necessarily um, how to say satisfying the developer standards uh, also the um, using like the the existing tooling like directly model checker with like tla plus led to the pretty slow feedback cycle with like any uh, relatively complex uh, models or specifications and this was also kind of not what like people are normally get used to um one also on a more general protocol design level the challenge was that the rigorous protocol design was very unpredictable in terms of like cost and timeline and it was not like very incremental process so like 
when we design systems, we are uh, we already have like I think the the methodology and tooling how to do it in a sort of more incremental way. Um, with the protocol design, it, it feels more like kind of um, you know one big chunk of work where it's just hard to say uh, when it will done. And this is very um, tricky, especially from like downstream dependencies, as we kind of, for example, from IBC perspective. Um, it was really hard to say like when it will be ready because we are working on the kind of core design. Um, and uh, on the ADR side, this architecture the decision records, although like it was very nice, you know, like having this as part of the process, um, having like uh, the proposed changes at the level of like, you know, text and diagram um, was very like um, insufficient to really estimate the impact it might have on the code, uh, both from the correctness and performance perspective. But like uh, the, I would particularly stress the correctness side because like in the complex system, making a change, like which is you know, not trivial um, in, in this kind of, you know, distributed uh, um, co complex system, like for example, Tendermint or Comet is, um, you just never know like, uh, or it's very hard, you know, to know with confidence what could go wrong with a change if you just stay at a level of like, you know, text and diagram. So the so this is sort of like, you know, to kind of summarize in general, um, we were quite happy with the choices we made that like, and right now uh, we have pretty strong protocol design practice in Cosmos, uh, both for like Comet and IBC, which are most kind of distributed heavy um, part of the stack. Uh, we are using like the, the, the protocol first uh, design where like all core protocols are being, you know, or specifications are normally uh, written before we start like with any serious development. Uh, and I think this is something which is kind of right now understood and appreciated by the community. This is part of the kind of the, the, the word the, the, the quality is coming from. Um, on the other side, like um, with TLA plus, although we had like, uh, um, let's say in-house success, uh, as we, we managed to attract like uh, some very strong uh, uh, verification folks, we were not able to scale this to the larger audience. And in that sense, like um, even like internally, um, we are not really able to, um, change the way we develop process. So like um, in, I think, 2019, we were even having something called verification-driven development process where we try to write it down how it might look like where the, the verification, you know, tooling, like formal specs are part of the overall development process. But uh, for for the, the reasons I'm mentioning here, um, we just like never really managed to, to see like, um, you know, strong adoption even internally, and then also like uh, in a larger uh, Cosmos development community. And so these are actually the reason why we have decided to uh, to develop Quint. And, um, and so I will now explain you what the Quint is about. Uh, so the, the Quint is, um, is a modern specification language uh, which is like relying or we are we are building on top of the um, temporal logic of actions or TLA. Uh, we with Quint we offer alternative syntax uh, to TLA, but like keeping all the the core elements of the temporal logic of actions, which is really very um, well adapted for distributed and concurrent systems. Uh, on the syntax side, we have like two major uh, design decisions that syntax should be close to modern programming languages and therefore more user-friendly for beginners. So we wanted to reduce the learning curve as much as we can and have like uh, Queen syntax feel really like, you know, modern languages um, so that people don't like uh, really need to put a lot of effort to like understand or, you know, be able to write Quint. And also we wanted syntax to be easy to um, parse and analyze so we can iterate quickly at a language level and also um, to facilitate development uh, of the, the tooling around Quint. And this is also uh, the challenge we were, we were having with TLA plus that essentially um, it was very hard to modify or build tools around the stuff as like syntax, syntax of TLA plus was sort of not having this 
uh, this property. So Quint, um, apart from like being um, uh, having like you know developer friendly syntax, uh, it come already like uh, with a set of tooling. Uh, for example, uh, there is a VS Code plugin uh, and Rappel. So like developer experience like working with Quint is is like similar like with with the traditional programming languages. Um, it is a statically um, typed language. And therefore, we are able to do the uh, static type and effect checking at the level of the you know specification, which we treat as a code. Um, there is a tool for literate programming, so we can uh, work write uh, code snippets in Quinn directly in Markdown, which is like the default way for writing English specification in Cosmos. And then we can actually uh, compile um, and and make sure that that actually. Um, the the markdown end up with like uh, with a code which which can actually be compiled and executed, and finally we integrated Quint with the Apache model checker, uh, which is symbolic model checker for TLA plus, uh, and then with this integration uh, we have essentially the the full power of Apache model checker um, available also using like with more more modern uh, Quint syntax. Uh, so these are just like few uh, screenshots, so you can get uh, uh, a sense of um, how it feels writing uh, Quint. So like um, with, with Quint specifications are are written in VS Code, um, and you can also like debug it or in interact with the code like the similar in a similar way uh, like we do with the with the normal code, as actually your design docs or specifications are code, and then you can essentially have um, the nice you know ux experience as you can see when there is a problem you know there's a type or there's like a type mismatch uh or also you can have a tool um, um helping you to figure out you know um what what function you want to to implement or or to you know go to definition etc like just the normal stuff which you have uh with the modern programming languages just in this case you're writing like your your specification um queen specifications are uh are as i said like uh, their code and therefore you can run tests for your your protocols um and this is something which is also um let's say the the we see as as very interesting uh feature of quint because um we like this this let's say uh, uh traditional way of writing protocols uh, in in the pseudo code, um, we actually are. It, it's hard to really know. Like uh, apart from you know writing proofs, are we indeed like uh, implementing what we want? And um, and so also like how we make sure that like follow up changes are not breaking something. And it can go from you know like simple like syntax checks to like more more fundamental issues. Uh, and so you can essentially as there is a set of like uh, tests you can write in your spec. You can like connect it uh, and run it. Uh, your protocol is in continuous integration, like you do uh, with a code, with a normal code, and then uh, you will essentially have signals if something is wrong. Um, Quint also allow generation of um, test scenarios in um, in JSON uh, in what we call informal trace format. It's a simple JSON format uh, where uh, runs, which is a, a form of tests, and invariants are actually a, a source of um, traces or or scenarios and you can um you can use this this um trace trace generator not just for you know like let's say tricky invariants but also for like you know happy path like it's a very simple um and easy to to define like what should happen in the code uh or you know what what we are kind of convinced it will work and then it will generate like a um automatically a bunch of um, scenarios which can be then integrated in your code um, and executed uh, against like code directly so with quint um as i said we were trying to address also the issue with the feedback loop which was challenging with tla plus um, and you know model checkers as that was sort of the only way how you can uh, how you can like reason uh, about TLA plus 
uh, with Quint, we have a built-in simulator. And, uh, and so you can interact either uh, with simulator through REPL or directly um, from your know, command line. Um, VS Code comes with uh, syntax and effect checks. And, uh, and so simulator, which is essentially randomized test um, generation is, is allowing like very fast um, feedback loop. Um, and, and we are using like simulator to run like unit tests and non deterministic randomized tests. And then um, integration with, uh, with Apalachi, with model checker, allow us then to use the same, the same specification um, then to be verified with like Apalachi, where there are like two modes uh, of model checking, the random, uh, randomized execution and, uh, and full uh, uh, bounded model checking. So to summarize uh, why we believe Quint, um, Quint should be um, a, you know, part of your toolbox, um, it allows faster experiment, experimentation and onboarding. Um, it is, it is uh, very easy to write the, the, the protocol in Quint and then to simulate and play with this and have like, you know, the feedback loop. Uh, and we have seen also people uh, without like, you know, strong, let's say protocol design experience uh, discovering the protocol and figuring out, you know, being able to answer to the question which were in the past only uh, uh, we were able to answer about, you know, uh, let's say the very senior protocol engineer, like, you know, why I need this field here or, you know, what happens if I remove the step in the protocol. Now it's like very easy with Quint to get like, you know, counterexample uh, or, you know, positive scenarios to understand why this is the case. It's very easy to install. You just need NPM for this. Uh, instead of drawing uh, scenarios uh, on whiteboard, on paper, you can run scenarios uh, in Quint. Um, Quint allow uh, uh, engineers and developers to uh, formalize uh, networking and you know, uh, fault, um, fault assumptions. And uh, it also like, uh, again, help with understanding of like how system is supposed to operate. Um, it has a formal semantics, so it can be used as a portal to uh, model checking tools, and it, it's um, it's a fully uh, uh, type checked, so um, statically typed uh, language, so you can have uh, essentially uh, you can see static errors as you type and be able to easily fix them. And uh, um, and so this is like essentially the kind of the, the main uh, thesis we're trying to, to prove with Quint that executable specifications or protocol as code should be at the center of development process. So that's really like, you know, what was our, our thesis from the beginning, but we just felt that existing tools are not really allowing us to do this. At least this was our experience. And we are, you know, with Quint, we are trying to, to like uh, achieve this. Uh, so at the end of the day, uh, you can think about Quint as a communication tool. We believe that uh, that Quint enables learning of protocol and, and protocol discovery um, faster than, you know, without Quint or with like other tools. Uh, we believe that like, handwritten or mechanical proofs are not really good communication tools. So like if you re remember like the issues we were having, in, you know, in 2017, um, the challenge at that time was that if you know you have one person in a team understanding how protocol works, but not really able to communicate this to others, uh, then it's it's not really good for a team. Like um, it's it's almost impossible to scale that knowledge. So with Quint, uh, we already have evidence is that, that actually like um, it is much more uh, better communication tool. Uh, we can generate acceptance scenarios or model based testing um, cases and connect specification with the code. And finally, the, the familiar syntax and formal semantics allow Quint to be used by people with different uh, backgrounds and, uh, and expertise like protocol designers, developers, test engineer, and verification engineer. And they can collaborate on the same artifacts. We don't need to have we don't need to have like dedicated artifact for a different like audience, which is then almost impossible uh, to keep in sync. 
we have started using Quint. So it was released um, end of last year. So just before uh, New Year. Um, and so we have been using it uh, internally um, basically since January. Uh, it has been heavily used in the Comet team, that consensus, uh, consensus engine team. And like this is a um, this is a comment on the PR, which is explaining uh, the P two P, how P two P is working or part of P two P, which is like part of the code which hasn't been touched for years, and no one really understood how it works really. Um, and uh, this is like a comment left by by one of the most senior uh, people in the team. That as you see that that uh, essentially. There is a there is a praise that um, it's very clear and concise, and that he was able to learn uh, so much uh, by reading like so little. We are using also informal is also involved in the security audit business, and uh, we have been using it in like um, like various uh, security audits, and we have found like uh, almost in all cases like critical issues by by modeling protocols. And fast testing, uh, fast testing them with Quint, and also like the the client seems to be very um, excited by 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 the Quint, and you know, by seeing uh, what we can do with it. So I will I will like uh, stop here. Um, this is more invitation for you to to like take a look at the Quint and download and, and play with it. Uh, there are already like pretty good documentation. There are like uh, tutorials and quote wars. Uh, we are continuously adding more material material there and we are organizing like, you know, a bunch of workshops these days to essentially spread the word about Quint. And uh, we really like, you know, if this is something uh, which sounds interesting, we are uh, super happy to learn about this and, um, and to you know collaborate and help you use use the quint, and uh, that's all. I would like to thank you for attention, and uh, I'm happy to to answer to your question. Jarko, thanks a lot for the for the great talk. I think the these uh, these tools are invaluable. So let's start with questions. We have a few questions actually from uh, Consensus Lab from Alex and, and Alfonso. So Alex asks, uh, from what I understand, Quint code is the specification and is also the code itself. Are there significant or worth mentioning remarks on the overhead, such as on the performance of integrating the two? Is this an argument to not implement production level code in Quint or are there others? So let's, let's take the, the first question, basically. Do you have any remarks on, like, is it a specification and the code itself or is it a specification only? It's really a specification language. So we are convinced that uh, we need to have like different level of abstractions. And uh, and there are like programming languages like, you know, Rust uh, who are, uh, or Go, who are essentially, um, uh, I think like the right tool for writing uh, production systems. So the, the Quint is executable in a sense that you can you can run it and you can, uh, you can, you know, simulate it and you can verify the properties with it. Uh, but at this point in time, we are not really planning like Quint to be used uh, directly as, let's say, a production language. Uh, we believe that uh, that with Quint, uh, the the primary target audience is sort of like you know design or architecture, and um, we want to replace primarily pseudocode or you know diagrams, and we want to give. Um, larger developer audience uh, tools they can use to like better interact and, and have more confidence in uh, when they design their systems or they're trying to like uh, uh, reverse engineer how system work or when they're trying to compose different systems so the quint comes with a nice uh, nice tooling so you can do this with more confidence and maybe in future like um there are there are you know some ideas of using Quint as a you know smart contracting language, but like we're not currently addressing that. So I hope that uh, I answer this answer like the question. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think that the, the following questions by Alex are then relevant because they're focused more like on, on performance. But a follow up question from Alfonso is like, and 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 I would join the asking the question. So how what, how would you suggest? we move then from Quint as a specification language to a production-ready implementation? Like, what do you guys, 
how would how do you guys approach this in informal because so we still have this gap right because like you know, okay the specification is there we are happy with the specification it's like doing what we thought we would like you to do but what happens to the actual production code implementation yeah so the our our sort of current answer to this is model based testing and so what like what you get with the with a quint model or a quint specification are abstract test scenarios which which ha should have like enough like semantics in it and they're like abstract and then they can be integrated at a different level uh, of testing um, for example you can integrate them as part of unit test because what you actually get there you get like these scenarios like you know Ellie sent this message to Bob and then Bob did this etc um so we we, we like um separation between the protocols and the code we can keep protocols at the right level of abstraction so we can ignore the the, the uh, year 11 details and then we can fill those like um during testing phase so the um that that sort of you know how we were using it internally and we still uh that's still you know our answer to this question because like what we learned also uh working with different engineering teams is that um testing is something which um I would say the the engineers are are very opinionated about and it's hard to change practices and and like almost every team is having you know their own way of like doing testing and it's almost like you know as complex sometimes as the code itself and uh, we have tried with some of the tools to also offer alternative to this and also let's say propose an um, opinionated way of dealing with this and it hasn't really been accepted well so like our strategy now is more that like we can support testing by providing in a, in a simple way test scenarios which are normally very hard to implement directly at a code level so we have like examples where we can replace like two pages of code so like you know thousands line of code uh we like two lines of uh of specific you know formal spec like in TLA plus or quint where we just capture okay this is like the what we would like to see and then like uh uh the model checker or simulator are able to generate in, in some cases you know like uh, 10 or more steps to satisfy the simple property and then what like testing uh, um, end up doing is is essentially building like a, a small shim layer which will interpret the this json you know like the 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 itf format and just add the missing part so it can actually uh, compile and be executed in the real code Excellent, thanks. So I have a question from Alison. Uh, do you have a complete uh, BFT protocol implemented in Quint? And I have a follow-up question, depending on your answer there. Uh, so Igor is currently working on porting uh, Tendermint uh, specs to Quint. So we don't have it yet, uh, but uh, we'll probably have it very soon. We have it in TLA+, uh, and, and now we're essentially uh, just... Um, as actually, like you know, that's also a challenge with TLA plus that we realized by doing this exercise that the TLA plus specs and we really invested, uh, you know, invested a lot in, in formalizing uh, all aspects of Tendermint, including you know the fork accountability part. And now we realize that like you know uh, the specs are not really up to date, uh, you know, with uh, with the tooling changes, um, and and that's part of also of like what we would like to address here. That in our view, if like specifications are not really treated there as artifact the same as code and they're not in CI, there is almost no way that you can keep them in sync. And then after the first implementation is done, they sort of become like, you know, um, I, I cannot say irrelevant, they still have value, but there is always, you know, like this uh, warning you need to, to issue to people like, okay, uh, probably in code, there is something different uh and so that's that's what you know our hope with quint is that that's really like a, um it's a tool we're using it on a daily level to understand what's happening and you know to to design the the major changes uh with more confidence etc so you will have like uh there are quite few already examples in quint uh and and the the tendermint protocol will be uh ported like very soon Excellent. Uh, do you have any feedback about, uh, uh, like, how many teams, be it, be it in academia or industry, are already using Quint or, or looking at it, uh, going through tutorials or, or anything like that? 
So uh, we haven't been very uh, aggressive on, on let's say, uh, uh, pushing for it. Uh, we shared in, in our circle and uh, in academia, um, I'm not aware of like anyone really using it at this point in time. Um, in industry, there are, there are like, we have like teams internally using it and we have um, what we are doing like in this quarter, we, we targeted like IBC community in Cosmos because they are, you know, dealing with like they're designing distributed protocols. And we have a, 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 a bunch of workshops planned with those teams as they show interest, uh, learning more and figuring out how they can do it. So hopefully uh, in like, you know, a few weeks uh, or months from now, there will be, a, you know, I will be able to kind of uh, answer to this in a kind of more um, concrete uh, or, or kind of positive way. But the feedback we are getting, like, you know, with TLA Plus, the general sentiment was that people were appreciating the work, but like they were like, we cannot use this, like, you know, it's only for experts. The feedback we are getting for Quint is like consistently like, I can actually use this. And now they're just asking to understand like um, how exactly it works. Jarko, thanks a lot for your talk, for your time, and, and for advancing the state of the art in this uh, very valuable domain here. Thanks, thanks, thanks so much. Thanks, Marco, and, and thanks, everyone. And, you know, please, uh, if it sounds is interesting, uh, uh, drop a message to me or, or like anyone at, at Informal. We will be happy to, to learn about and, and help you, uh, you know, join the, join the board.